I was, I was thinking about what to talk about, and I looked at some of the messages that were being preached uh, here, and I was like, man, this is super good. And I thought one of the greatest questions that a lot of people have about their faith or about their life is where am I supposed to be? Come on, has anybody ever asked that question? Where am I supposed to be in life? What am I supposed to be doing? Where am I supposed to be going? What is that is the number one question, one of the biggest questions. Because here's the truth, and this is why you should care and listen to the message today. Because some of you have no idea where you're going. Some of you have no idea who you are. That's the heart behind today's message. That's the big why. So what I want you to know is that you and I are at our best when we seek the Lord for our purpose. And what I want you to do is to seek the author and finisher of your faith so that he can show you where you're supposed to be. It's going to be a good word. Amen? I'm excited for it. I hope you are too. All right? So that's the big why. Some of you may not, may not know where you're going, what you're doing. What I want you to know is that you and I are at our best when we know our purpose, when we know who we are and where we're going. And what I want you to do is to seek the author and finisher of the faith to be where you're supposed to be. It's going to be so good. And um, I can't wait to get into the word today. We're going to be coming from uh, uh, the book of Hebrews chapter 12 beginning at verse 1 so you can turn in your bibles your your bible app your tablet whatever you got with you uh you can follow along with us on here i'm reading for the new king james version and then we're gonna start um to read that and we're gonna pray and go ahead and dive into the word amen all right so therefore hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 therefore we also since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses <clears throat> lay us, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. I love that because it doesn't say the, the race that is set before, you know, someone else. It's the race that's set before me, my race. I have to run that race, the race that I have that the Lord is going to give me the endurance to run. Amen. Verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the Arthur and finisher of our faith. Who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Church, let's pray. Father, we just thank you, God. You are very, you, you're just too good, God. You're awesome, Lord. Everything that you do is amazing, Lord. And we just give you all the glory and the credit and the praise, Lord. Father, move me completely out of the way, Lord. Speak through me, Lord. Father, I just pray for the listeners right now, whether here or online, Lord, that your people will receive something deep, something, a message, Lord, that will convict them, that will prick them, that will, they will, that will make them go home to seek you on a deeper level, God, to go deeper in you and to want to grow. Father, we give you the praise. Thank you for what you're going to do in this message. Thank you for being here with us, Lord. You're so awesome and good. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, all right, all right. So um, being where you're supposed to be is uh, one of the biggest uh, hearts and desires of, of, of my heart. Being where you're supposed to be is very important. And when you're in the Bible, one thing I like to do is uh, the Bible uh, uh, was written thousands and thousands of years ago. What I love to do is to take biblical examples and place them in 2024. Like, I love to read Jesus, and then I love to put Jesus in 2024 to see how Jesus would, Jesus would talk today, right? That just helps me in, in reading and my faith and everything. So one of the things I also do is I always try to find something that is comparable uh, to this message, right? So um, being where you're supposed to be, one of the things that I always think about is football. How many football fans in here? Football, 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 football. Let's go. How many days till kickoff, NFL? Anybody know? 78, 79, 100? Too long, right? It's not seven days, so I'm not happy, okay? Um, so uh, one of the things I love about football, right, it's 11 uh, positions on offense, 11 positions on defense. You got cornerback, you got a free safety, you got a strong safety, you got a middle linebacker, outside linebacker, defensive end, you got guards, you got tackles, you got nose guard, you got all these positions. But if one person is out of position and where they're supposed to be, the play or the team are not as effective as they can be, right? They'll still make a play. But they're making better plays if they're where they are supposed to be. Amen? I remember, um, <clears throat> this was about a month ago, and I went to go get a swim cap for my daughter because we were going to the pool. <clears throat> and 
Um, and wives, I don't know why y'all do this, but y'all send husbands, y'all send us to the store to set us up. It's hazing. I know it is. Y'all send us to the store because y'all know we get confused and y'all do it anyway, okay? So, we, yes, yes. So, my wife sent me to the store to get a swim cap. I don't even know where to shop for a swim cap, you know? So, the problem was this. I'm looking at the swim caps. It's one right here. It was one my daughter's size, right? But the problem was that it was the same exact ones on this rack. One rack said $5 and one rack said like $17. So here I am confused. Mission accomplished from my wife. What's even worse is I called her. She didn't pick up the phone. She set me up. Set me up. I seriously, I'm not joking to you in the house of God. I seriously contemplated for like 15, 20 minutes. Like, what should I do? Like, which one is the right price? And you know, they don't got the little barcodes no more where you can just put it under and scan. Why they don't got that no more? Anyway, um, I don't know why. But um, so I took, I took a couple to the, to the counter, hoping that it was the $5 one. And I scanned it and, and you know, I almost did a shout in there. It was $5. Come on, somebody. <laughs> it was the right price. So, but I, I, I immediately began to think, how frustrating this is. How confusing is it that this item was not where it's supposed to be? Because now you have a confused, frustrated shopper trying to find out the right price for something that they're trying to purchase and something that they're trying to do, but it's not in the right place. It's not in the right place. When we are out of place, it brings confusion and it brings frustration. Amen. One of the uh, um, movies, I always like to bring movies to the Bible. Like, what movie, what, what movie can preach, okay? And one of the movies I thought about that can preach in this sermon was one of the GOAT Disney movies, The Lion King, okay? It's not my GOAT movie. It's Google's GOAT movie, okay? Take it up with Google, all right? I have another GOAT Disney movie. But um, Lion King is one of, the, one of the greatest movies when you're thinking about purpose and when you're thinking about uh, uh, being where you're supposed to be. You got Simba who was exiled from Pride Rock because his father was murdered, okay? Then Simba is, is uh, forced to grow up with foreigners, right? And he's happy. He's a kuna matata, means no worries for the rest of your days. You know, he's all happy doing his thing, grew his hair out, you know, all this other stuff. And he's just living a dream, eating worms and no worries, no cares, right? But until somebody comes to him from where he's from and then reminds him, of who he truly is. And they told him that, hey, I know you're happy, but do you know that you're, you're a king? Do you know that you're not from here? And he confused him. So what did he, he sought his father to get instruction. Then he went to go seek some spiritual help. I'm not saying that it was godly, okay? It was some, some other stuff, okay? You know you know the movie, okay? <laughs> but one of the things he did was to seek his father to get confirmation to get confirmation of understanding of who he was, that he was a true king. And then he went back to reclaim his rightful place in Pride Rock. That is exactly what God is calling for us to do today. He is calling us to seek him, the Father, so that we can understand who we are and we can understand where we are supposed to be. Amen. That's where we're supposed to be. That's what, we, that's, that's, what we, that's what he wants us to know. So I want you to remember the synopsis because sometimes we can be confused about who we are and where we're supposed to go what we're supposed to be doing. So what I want you to know is that you and I are at our best, best version of you is with the Father. He wants to give that purpose to you. And what we're supposed to do is to seek the author and finisher of our faith, to be where we're supposed to be. If you're on a journey to discover who you are, we're going to get to the sermon. I can't wait. We got three powerful, impactful steps for you that you can take to take steps to figuring out your purpose and who you truly are and where you're supposed to be in life, okay? I believe your purpose is tied to two things, uh, where you're going and who you are. And this message is applicable to the youngest person in the room, to the oldest person, to the teenager, to the youth, to the young adult, whether you're single, whether you're married, whether you're Gen X, a boomer, silent generation, all generations in this building. Because a lot of times you think, well, I, I got to get that when I'm younger, but when I'm older, I'm established, I'm good to go. No, everyone needs this message. We all need to know where to go, right? We all need to know what to do and what the Lord has for us to be, right? I'm passionate about this because I was having a conversation with my father-in-law. This was about maybe, maybe about seven years ago, eight years ago. I'm not sure. So my, my, my in-laws, um, back in the day, they would always ask me. I was a banker for five years at Wells Fargo, and, and I loved my job. I loved what I did. Seriously, I did. Um, but 
you know, um, our life was moving so fast. We was having baby at the baby at the baby. I didn't give my wife a chance to breathe. Okay, <laughs> so, um, so my father-in-law would say, "Hey, man, what, what, what are y'all doing? You know, what's what's next for you? What's next?" And he would, when I would get with them, they would always say that, "What's next?" What, what's, what? And I'm like, "What's next?" And I'm like, and in, in me, I wanted to say, "I don't know what's next. I don't know. I'm just out here, just figuring it out." You know. But I would give some type of philosophical, theological, you know, uh, 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 long answer. Well, you know, I'm trying to climb up the corporate ladder or the bank, and I want to be a manager. So I'm seeking that opportunity. And, you know, I would kind of force out some, some stuff that I knew I wasn't passionate about, but it's what he wanted to hear, so I would say it. So I'm having a conversation with him one day, and he flipped the script on me. He asked me a question that was so deep, and it sent me to, to just think about it. He said, hey. Are you taking up somebody else's seat? And I never thought about it like that. I never thought about it like that. And I didn't have any theological long answer to give him because it just really left me speechless. Left me speechless. And I just began to think and I began to think and I began to think like, wow. You know, until I came to the conclusion that I'm a seat filler. I'm not supposed to be here. I love the bank. I love what I'm doing. I love the people that I get to help. I love where I'm going. I love my job. But let's face it, I'm not supposed to be here. And I knew it. But what I also knew is my fear to get to where I was supposed to be, the steps that it would require. So I would, I would, I would kind of cringe in fear thinking like, ah, oh, man, it's a lot to get there. So I'm going to just stay right here where I'm comfortable. So I got with people and, and prayed and just at ultimately I went from being a seat filler to being in full-time ministry. This is, is going to be my fifth year in full-time ministry or my sixth one of them. I don't even know. But God has just been so faithful and I've just been so happy for what he is doing in my life. And it's just been so good. And I want to remind you that our Heavenly Father is too good and he is too knowledgeable to not provide direction for you and your life. He's too good. And he's too knowledgeable. He knows too much. And he's too good. He loves you too much to not provide you your direction on where you're supposed to be and where you're supposed to be going. Amen. And the best version of you and your purpose is in the hands of Jesus Christ, who is the author and finisher of your faith. So we're going to go through these three steps. Are you guys ready? All right. I got two rules when I preach. If it's good, say amen. That's the first rule. The second rule is if I lift my hands up and y'all see this ring right here under my underarms, don't judge me. Just pray for me, okay? Because I believe, listen, I believe the Lord for all things. I believe the Lord can retain the moisture, okay, and keep it right here. And it is just unreleased when I get off stage, God. Just hold it. Hold it, Jesus. All right, three steps. Are you ready? I can't go. Are y'all ready? Amen, amen. All right, step one is seek the Arthur and the finisher of your faith. That's step one. Got to seek the Arthur. Got to seek the finisher. I love the chapter that we read because it said, looking unto who? Jesus, who is the Arthur and the finisher of our faith. Also in Hebrews, the writer says, and having been perfected, he became the Arthur of eternal salvation to all who obey him. The word Arthur in the Greek is translated to atheos, which means causer, meaning Jesus is the cause for everything that we see in this world. Meaning he did it on purpose, with a purpose, with the intention so that we can know and believe in his creation. Right? He is the alpha and omega. He is the beginning and the end. And our life, listen to me, our life is a fascinating book that Jesus is the Arthur of. Your life. He's writing a beautiful story in you. And he is not done. Amen? For those of you who came here today thinking it's over, it's not done. Your story is just beginning. If you got a pulse, you got a purpose. Amen? That's good. So two most important, two most important days in your life is the day you were born and the day when you figure out why you were born. Amen? When you figure out why you were born, look out. There's a dangerous you. There's a dangerous you because now you're not copying and pasting. Oh, well, well, let me see what they're doing. I'm going to do that. It looks good. Well, let me see what they're wearing. Maybe that will look cooler. Maybe I'll get more likes. Maybe I'll uh, uh, get more attention if I'm wearing what they're wearing or saying what they're saying or doing what they're doing. And we're just copying and pasting and copying and pasting. But it's something about something original about what the Lord has for you. What does he have for you? Right? 
That's where the power lies in, because now that's where the confidence is in, that you can be confident in what the Lord is doing in you. Amen, church? That's, that's it right there. That's it. It's hard to find out why you were created without seeking the person who created you. I love, God. I love calling God many names, but one of the names that I love to call the Father is the Creator. I love that word, creator, because it reminds me that he created all things. He created the heavens. He created the earth. He created you. He created me. He created our minds. He created everything. I love saying that word, right? And sometimes in life, we just kind of go into a mode that I call figure it out, right? How many of y'all just trying to figure it out right now? Figure it out. I'm just figuring it out, right? Sometimes when the kids ask us, what for dinner? My wife and I look at each other and we cry. (laughs) We cry because neither one of us got the energy to cook. And we like, look, there's some cereal in there. There's a peanut butter jelly sandwich, you know, and then we just leave the house and hope they figure it out. I'm just joking. It's hard out here. Sometimes we just figuring it out, right? Any, seen, any uh, 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 people in here that's going to be a senior in school? Any seniors, rising seniors in here? Rising seniors? Anybody? 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 Okay. When you are, when you all remember... When you were going into your senior year, the question that everybody would ask you, oh, my God, you've grown so much. Wow. What school are you going to? Wow. Oh, my God. So what, you, so what do you think is next? It's like, I don't know what's next. I'm just trying to figure it out. I'm just trying to figure it out, right? And I want to remind you today that one of the things that I love about what I love doing, right, that's super therapeutic to me, is when I build furniture, right, when you get a dresser or you get like an entertainment center, or you get like a, a, a you know, like home DIY projects at home. You know, sometimes uh, when you get those things, it comes with all these pieces, and it comes with the nails, the screws, the Ollie wrench, all these other things. And I love to kind of tell everybody, back up, back up. I want to do it because it's super therapeutic to me, right? And one of the things I love to do is I don't look at the instructions. I just, I just, I just want to figure it out. I want to see how far I'm going to get without the instructions, right? I, I just, I just want to know. I just want to know, right? Until I get to the point where I'm like, oof, that's not standing up right. <laughs> that's not standing up right. I got to unscrew this whole thing, right? But what was I doing? I was just trying to, I was just trying to figure it out. And I think that's a lot of times we're doing that in life. We're just trying to figure it out. Until we get to the point where we're realizing I'm not standing right. There's something off about me. I got to go back and read the what? Instructions. Because the creator made this and he put the instructions in the box so that I would not be confused, so I would not be frustrated on how to operate in my life. We got to go back to the instructions. You got to go back to the book in the Bible so it can show you how to live, so it can show you how to seek the Lord. We got to go back to the instructions. Amen, church. That's what we got to do. That's what we got to do. I love one of my favorite scriptures, is Psalms 121. It says, I will lift up, or I'll lift up my eyes into the hills from what's cometh my help. All of my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth, who created heaven and earth. I love that. Because when you seek the Lord, I want to remind you, when you seek the Lord, it is impossible for you not to come out of the presence of the Lord without knowing who you truly are. Impossible. No way. Because he's too good, he's too knowledgeable, and he loves you too much to not remind you of where you're supposed to go and who you are. No way. So I sought the Lord. One of my favorite songs, I trust in God. My Savior, the one, I'm not going to sing it. I'm going to spare y'all, okay? (laughs) I love that part. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. Man, if you ever prayed for something hard, you know that hits down deep in your soul. Because when you were down and out and when you were confused about where to go, when you did not know what to say, when you did not know what you were going to do or what your family was going to do, and when you lost a job or when you lost the whatever it was, you sought the Lord and he what? He answered because he is a faithful father and that's what he does. Amen? So now that you know who you are and when you figure out your purpose and where you're supposed to be, the second thing is to take action and go. That's step two. Step two is to go. Let me hear you say let's go real loud. Say it one more time. Let's go. That's it right there. That's it. That's it. You and I are at our best, at our best. The best version of you is with the Father. When he reveals that to you, you can go. Amen? You can go. And it's really not about you. 
you know, I got to find my purpose. I got to, you know, amen. But it's really not about you. It's about displaying the one who created you to other people. So you got to seek to where you're to be where you're supposed to be, so others can witness the Creator and the glory of Him. That's what it's about. It's not about us. It's all about Him. When I left banking and I said yes to full time ministry, it was one of the happiest days of my life. I walked out of there skipping and jumping. Yes, and it wasn't because I didn't love my job. I loved my job, and I served there very well. But I was happy that the Creator of the heavens and the earth, I sought Him. And he answered me, and he gave me my assignment, my purpose. He showed me where I'm supposed to go. That's why I had so much joy, and I was so overwhelmed, like, me? You you spoke to me. And sometimes you got to be reminded today that sometimes you go a long time without seeking God. You go a long time without reading your word, praying, all these other things. And you got to be reminded that God truly does answer prayer. He truly does hear you. He truly does see you. And he's ready to answer your prayers. Amen? One of the happiest days of my life. I love the Bible because when they said yes, when when certain people said yes in the Bible, they saw great and amazing things. When you figure out your purpose and where you're supposed to be and you say yes, you will see great things happen. In the Bible, when Moses finally said yes, he was going back and forth with God, back and forth with God. God, I can't go. I don't want to go. Send somebody else, Lord. And then he finally went and he saw the 10 plagues. God moved in a powerful, powerful way. Right? Jonah, when he ran from God and, 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 and God finally, and he finally went to Nineveh, the Bible says in, uh, in chapter 4 that he, they saw more than 120,000 Ninevites that repented. 120,000 people. The Bible says even the animals fasted. Peter, he went from, when he said yes, he went from being a fisherman to being fishers of men. If you read Acts chapter 2, verse 38, thousands of people came to the Lord because of his preaching and because of his yes. When he said yes, when he understood who he truly was, he heard who he truly was, but he fully understood it and operated and walked in it after the day of Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost. When Paul said yes, he saw thousands of Gentiles saved through through the gospel of Jesus Christ. So many amazing and great things happen when we seek the Arthur and the finisher of our faith. Now we can go. And I want to tell you about the grace of God, right? Because even in your declination, even when you decline, even when you are confused, the grace of God is this, is that he still leads you. He still cares about you so much. Because I heard this quote. It's one of the greatest quotes I ever heard in my life, and that stuck with me. God has a a better ability to lead you than you have to mess it up. God has a greater ability to lead you than you have to mess up his plans for your life. There's nothing you can do to mess up God's plan for your life. He's sovereign. He's holy. He's the king. He's the creator of all things. Right? There's nothing we can do that could, that could, that could, God's not upstairs like, ooh, I need to wing it because he went, he went left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have him go right, make a U-turn, flip it back, go there, come back, go there, come back, go there. And then he'll get to his destination. You know, that's not God. Everything is on purpose. He is the causer of everything. He is intentional and he is sovereign. He's holy and good. He's holy and he's good. I love that. I love Jonah because even Jonah thought, I don't know where he thought he was going, where he thought he was running to, but he ended up right where the Lord wanted him to be. He ended up right where the Lord wanted him to be because that's where he was supposed to be. That's what he was supposed to be. And I want the Great Commission, which is not for um, just the preacher. Can I get an amen, somebody? The Great Commission is for the church to follow, right? The Great Commission, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 through 19, for us to follow. Amen? And a great commitment, I want to remind you today, a great commitment, when we commit greatly, a great commitment to the Great Commission makes a great church makes a great church. When we follow the Great Commission together, we see God do amazing, incredible things of what he's going to do. And I want to remind you, some of you have sought the Lord. I want to, you know, give you credit. Some of you have 
pray for God. God has answered. God has given you your purpose. God has shown you where you were supposed to be. And sometimes God has given you the dream. God has given you the word. God has shown you that friend who you're supposed to love on and to protect and to speak into, and you're sitting on it. And I want to encourage you today to go. Please go. Please. Please. There's so much behind your yes, so many amazing things behind that dream, behind that assignment, behind that purpose of yours that you could be sitting on. God is calling you today to go and to do it. Amen? That's what he's wanting for us to do. So when we know our purpose, it's a powerful thing. When we know where we're supposed to be, it's a powerful thing. When we're going and we're in motion, it's awesome, you're doing good, but that does not mean that you will not see hardship. That does not mean that it will. It will be easy, which leads me to my third step, which is to stand firm. Stand firm. Let me hear you say stand firm. (laughs) Say it one more time. Stand firm. You know, in 2019, um, that's when I left the bank, and I sought the Lord and um, because this was a big deal for me because I knew that I wanted to be in full-time ministry, which is a big step. Um, So I sought the Lord, and I remember when 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 I started to pray. I was so serious. I turned everything off. I, I, got with some, I got with some friends. We got together, and we turned off Netflix. We turned off Hulu. We HBO. Everything we was watching, we said, no, we're going to turn it off. And uh, come on, somebody. I, I stopped watching football. It, and, and, and it was the month of December. Okay? Yeah, somebody know. Somebody know. That's like primetime month. Like, you know, that's where you figure out who getting in, who getting, who's out, the playoffs, and everything like that. I, I turned it off for the Lord. I turned it off because I was so serious about where I was supposed to go. I was hungry. I was thirsty for my purpose. I was tired of living and doing something and working and where I wasn't supposed to be. I wanted to be where the Lord wanted me to be. So I said, God, if this is too close to me and if I need to turn it off to get closer to you, I will do it. If I need to say no, I will do it. If I need to put it down, I'll do it. If I need to cut it off, I will do it. I'll do it. I want to remind you today. Some of you are asking, where is the Lord? The Lord is buried sometimes under a bunch of your yeses, underneath a lot of your yeses. The shows that you said yes to, the friends that you said yes to, the decisions that you said yes to, a lot of those things, sometimes the Lord is buried right underneath there. And what is he calling you to do? He's calling you to say no, not today. I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow, and I don't care what happened yesterday, but today... I'm going to choose you. I don't care about yesterday. I'm not, even tom- I'm not in tomorrow. Today, I'm getting with you. Today, I'm going to read my Bible. Today, I'm going to pray. Today, I'm going to ask God, what's the vision for my family? Today, I'm going to ask God, where do you want me to go to school? Today, I'm going to ask God, help me to wait for my husband. Help me to wait for my wife. Today, I'm going to pray and ask the Lord to help me to be with me. That's what he's calling for us to do. That's what he's calling for us to do. So I turned off all of that stuff. Said, God, I'm seeking you. Super powerful movement. 2019, God told me two words. I'll never forget it. I was so excited. I was so pumped. He said, get ready. Woo! I was like, yeah, get ready. You know, I made a song about it. I made a whole mixtape about it. I'm not lying. I'm so serious. (laughs) I really did. I was so pumped up. But I was getting ready, everything on the outside, but I was not getting ready on the inside. I wasn't. I wasn't, I wasn't doing anything to prepare my spiritual life for what was to come. We left September 2019 to go to Michigan to pastor. No family there, nobody. That's where the Lord wanted us to be. We got hit COVID 2020 doing ministry, no family there. Not a good, solid group of friends there. One of the hardest seasons I've ever walked through in my life. Hard. But I said yes. But it was hard. Hard. Spent nights crying, frustrated, angry, sad, depressed. Never walked through depression before. Never. Until I, until I walked into that moment. Never. It was tough. It was super tough. And sometimes we get so excited about the word of the Lord, church, and we don't take the time to process what that word truly means.
this. God said, get ready. I got too excited. And it's like, no, no. You have to get ready because I'm preparing you for something. I'm preparing you for something. Get ready so that you can, so that you can handle it, so that you can manage it better with me. That's what God was calling me to do. The four people who I went over, Moses, Jonah, Peter, Paul, right? They said yes. They saw amazing things. But after that, it was hard for them. Moses, after the Red Sea and, you know, they had the tambourines. They were shouting and stomping and doing all that stuff. But do you know how many times he went back and forth with them? Disputes. Why you bring us out here? You brought us out here to die. This man was always going through it with the Israelites. Jonah. Jonah saw 120,000 plus people repent from his one word. 40 days, God's going to overthrow this whole city. If y'all don't get y'all selves to jump them. Jonah was mad. Chapter 4, verse 1. The Bible says he was exceedingly angry. And he said, you know what? God, I knew you was going to do something like this. Because you're loving and you're nice. And I wanted to see them just get annihilated. I knew he was going to save them. And I'm angry because they deserve justice. They are our enemies. You know, Israelites and Assyrians, we don't get along. They are not our people. Okay? You should have did this. You should have did what I wanted you to do, God. How many times do we say that? You should have did what I wanted you to do, Lord. Dangerous. They were upset. Saying yes doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Pete, Paul, uh, Peter, he was incarcerated two times and persecuted often. He said yes. Paul, one of the most <laughs> shipwrecked, stoned, flogged, whipped, betrayed by Jews, by Gentiles, by people that walk with him. Script 2 Corinthians chapter 11 is one of the most emotional scriptures I've ever read in my life. Every time I read it, I just want to cry because I think about the pressure that this man walked through just to get the gospel out to people. You might be asking yourself, what's the point of figuring out my purpose if I'm going to go through pain? And I, my answer is that because all purpose has, all pain has a purpose. Everything that you're going through has a purpose. And it is not, you're not working in vain. You're not. You're not. When you are where you're supposed to be, church, listen to this. You have, God is calling you to endure, to rejoice, and to stand firm on what he has called for you to do. If you know the assignment and you're in it, right? Sometimes we get hit what I call the three-word danger, right? The three-word danger is this. When you get hit and, you, and, and you're doing what the Lord has called you to do, sometimes you don't even seek the Lord. You just take your suffering as a sign of, I'm not supposed to be here. I feel like I'm not supposed to be here. Three words. God called me, three words, away. God showed me, three words. You're going away because of the pain. But God is right there with you. Just like he was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God is the fourth man in the fire with you. He is standing with you in the midst of your suffering. Do not give up on that assignment. Do not give up on your purpose. Do not give up on what he has called for you to do because he is right with you, encouraging you to endure, to rejoice about the word of the Lord that was over your life and to stand firm on what he called for you to do. Stand firm. Sometimes he does cause you to be flexible in your faith, right? Sometimes he does that. In fact, the word of the Lord over my life is 2022. And my wife comes to me. We're in Michigan. And my wife comes to me and she says, hey, I'm done. I said, first off, you done with what? Because you ain't done with me. You got to kill me. I ain't going nowhere. Take me out. She said, I, I, I tried everything I could. I'm, I'm just, I'm just not, I'm just, I'm just so uncomfortable. And don't get me wrong, I was uncomfortable too, but I was having a time of my life ministry-wise. Ministry was so much fun, but my wife was unhappy. And I knew I was going to have to deal with God. I knew God was going to come to me and be like, you better pray and, get, and, 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 and seek where you're supposed to be. So we went back and forth, back and forth, and we never argued. We just always tried to understand each other. I tried to understand her world. She tried to understand my world. We were just in two different places. And I said, you know what? Let's do this. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. And, um, and we, we even talked to some of our friends. We had talked to them. They encouraged us. And, uh, you know, and after that conversation, I said, you know what? We're going to pray. I'm going to pray for 
what it would look like to stay. I mean, to leave, because that's what I didn't want. I said, you pray for what it would look like to, 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 for the opposite of what you want. We took a week to fast and pray. Again, I turned everything off. We took a week to fast and pray. And I'll never forget, it was the second day that the Lord was just encouraging me and encouraging me and encouraging me on where we were supposed to be. And it was so evident that God was calling us back to Virginia in December of 2022. But I, that never would have happened if I did not seek the Lord. Because he is faithful. And the answer is right there. I'm not telling you something that I did not walk through. I walked through it. And I sought him. And I heard him. And he answered me. And my, I just cried. Because I'm like, God, all I got to do is seek you. All I got to do is pray. All I got to do is just look to you. And you'll tell me where I'm supposed to go. That's it. It's not rocket science. It's not hard. But it requires patience. And it requires saying no to some things, to seek him for where you're supposed to be, to where you're supposed to be. That's what he wants to do with us. That's exactly what he wants to do with us. I've never been so excited and so infused with joy in my life because I know my identity. I know my purpose. I know why I'm here. I know who I am. And I know where I'm supposed to go. And I'm so happy that I get to do what I get to do for a living. Amen. God is calling for us to all be there. What is he calling you to do? Where are you supposed to be? It doesn't matter how young you are, how old you are. Where are you supposed to be? What is he calling for you to do? My prayer is that you will leave this place and get on your knees when you get home. Maybe at night and say, God, reveal to me my assignment. Reveal to me my purpose. Right? Reveal to me my purpose, God. Show me who I am. I'm tired of copying and pasting. I'm tired of looking at this person and, and wearing what they're wearing, saying what they're saying, doing what they're doing. I'm tired of that. I want my own identity. I want my own calling. I want my own trail. I want my own way, Lord. What are you calling me to do? What is it? That's my prayer for everyone today. That's my prayer. And no matter where you're supposed to be, remember to endure and rejoice and stand firm. You can stand with me today, church. I want to I wanna retrace these steps. Amen. Step one was to, in, to seek the Father, to seek the Arthur and the finisher of your faith, to seek him. He's waiting for you. He loves you so much, and he has so much to share with you. Would you take the time to spend time with him this week? Amen. Step two was to go. You got it. You know what you're supposed to be going. You know what you're supposed to be doing. If you got a word that you're sitting on, get off that word, put it in front of you, apply it, and go. Go do it. We need you. People need you. We need to hear that word. We need to hear that dream. We need to hear that consolation. We need to hear the conviction. We need to hear the help. We need it. Step three is to stand firm. Stand firm on what he has called for you to do. No matter the suffering, no matter the pain, no matter how hard it is, stand firm and continue to do what the Lord has called you to do because all of your pain has a purpose and it's making you stronger. It's making you stronger. That's what I want you to know. God is not the author of confusion. He's the author of understanding. All understanding is with him. When you're in confusion, when you're in declination, he is with you. He is there. So I want to pray right now. I want to pray right now. I want to pray right now. Father, thank you, Lord, that we don't have to figure it out. You already got it figured out, Jesus. You already got it figured out. The plan is already made. The blueprint is rolled out, Lord. We just got to seek you, Lord. Thank you for calling us. Thank you for this message. Thank you for the hearts that are turning and thinking and wanting to, to seek you on a deeper level, Lord. And Lord, we know that you are a firm foundation and you will never fail. You are a faithful father. And every time we seek you, Lord, you will answer because that's who you are. Father, thank you. I don't want to pray for people that are in here today. If you have never received the Lord Jesus in your heart, today is the perfect day for you to do it. We're talking about being where you're supposed to be. Man, the first step is being here. And we all have the same eternal purpose, which is to worship the Father. We were all created for His glory. That's what we're all created to do. If you have never received Jesus before in your heart, you are in the perfect place today. You, and I want to remind you, you are where you're supposed to be. You're here. The next step is taking the step. 
to say, I want you in my heart, Jesus. So if you have never had Jesus in your heart, you don't know who he is, and you want to get to know him a little more, would you raise your hand for me? Would you, would you raise your hand? Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you are doing in this body of believers. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that we're all together. Father, help us, commission us, Lord, to go again, to go and believe you for more, believe you for greater, believe you for deeper. God, we just thank you for everything that you're doing and what you're going to do. Father, we give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.